so, and as Pastor Chow said, you should be able to give a logical explanation. So when you got Jesus' death, you should clearly got new nature. Amen. Amen. You died with him, and so you got a new nature. We're going to jump two because the development is in two. And then, and I don't care what you're doing. It is true, even though you got a new nature, you have something called memory. Unfortunately, when you get a new nature, he didn't give you a new baby mind. You understand? He, he let you keep the same adult or so-called adult mind. You, you understand? And he, you still have the same body that he's not letting get in, in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So as Pastor Chow said, because of this, all the things that the new nature, uh, the old nature are infused into the mind and the body still are there. Mm -hmm. You understand? You still have the habit that you want to sin and you want to think a certain way. Right, so we're gonna jump this for a minute. So, Christ's death, new nature. Mm. You understand? The old nature is gone. But over here, there's a key I want you to understand. I, I hear this happens many times, and pastors even it is done wrong. You're gonna get yourself in trouble. The blood is never for you. Go back and read Leviticus as Pastor Chow said. The blood satisfied God. The blood is for God. It isn't for you. The blood does two things, and it's exactly like Pastor Chow said. It's not for you. You know, when, 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 just like Pastor Chow said, when God tells the Israelites, put the blood on the door, it wasn't for them. He is to satisfy his requirement. The blood does two things. You know, the first thing, think of it like in um, marriage. You have to sign the paper to enter a covenant. Or let's say, um, what else? What are some of the things we have covenant in, in the world that we have to do? Or, or let's say you're going to buy a house. You know, the, the, the contract is there, you understand, to bind you together. You understand, to bind you on the bank, to make sure the bank can get their money and you are accountable for it. So the debt gives you a new nature, but the blood is what satisfies the relationship with you and God. Without the blood, God can have no relationship with what? With you. Because you are not in contract with him. The blood, everything God does, everything God did, when he wants to seal it, he seals everything by what? Blood. Just like how we use a signature when we buy a house or we do a marriage or we open a bank account. Everything with God, everything with the Israelites, go back and read the Old, the Old Testament or Levitical law. Every contract is binded by what? Blood. Even demons does this. How does Satan bind the contract with you? This is why God gets very angry with this process. How do you enter a covenant with a demon? This is why they used to what? Kill their children. You understand? This is why every demon, they have to shed enough blood. Whether it's the idol God or what, there's always shed enough blood. Because spiritual contract can only enact by what? Blood. If there are no blood, it is not considered a spiritual contract. This is why we use signature. They are physical contracts, not spiritual. All spiritual contract, it's not, you, I don't care what you sign to nobody. Until you use blood, it is not what? Spiritually, it's not binding. So you could not get, one of Christ's jobs, the Bible said in Malachi, is to turn the children's heart back to the father, turn the father's heart. They have to be, the Bible said, the shedding of blood, or there can be no contract. We are in no relationship, what? With God. So Jesus' blood satisfied the contract requirement for us to become God's, what? Children. Yes, so his death give us the new nature, the new Adam. You, 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 you understand? And, and, the, the blood satisfies the contract. That's one part. It does a little bit more than that. The second part to the blood, I call that the bottom part of the blood. The second part of the blood is this. It's like Pastor Joseph. Uh, every sin you, you have done or whatever done, the blood remove or provide for you forgiveness. Every time you need to get forgiven, you need to remember what? The blood. Every time you remember, as Pastor Joseph, why you should run to God or you feel comfortable to be with God or God will be with you, you must remember the contract blood. Mm -hmm. Just like the Israelites on the door, they were in contract, the spirit of death will not kill them. Mm -hmm. The blood will provide forgiveness and it will provide relationship. It satisfies both of God as Pastor Chow said, requirement. It's not for you. Mm -hmm. It's for him. It's his thing. Mm -hmm. Amen? And it allows him as Pastor Chow said, when you're here, so I have, I have died with Christ. You understand? And now through his resurrection, so when I die, when Christ died, his, his, his sinful nature that he took from all of us died. And when I died with him, my sinful nature died. But when Christ was resurrected, he got a new nature and what? If he come up, I come up. When he went down, I went up. So his resurrection is what gives me the new nature. So he went down, I went down, he come up, I come up. But then his blood 
Get me in relationship now, and it gets in me what? Forgive me. But then the pastor Charles said, okay, I get this now. You, so you got to get that logical, you should even explain that minimum to yourself. When you're, cause this is, the, 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 the trick is right where we're going to stand here. What, this is where the enemy handle you, and this is why you don't make spiritual progress. No, okay, so remember, I'm in contract, I am forgiven, I die, I resurrect. Does this make sense? Yeah. Old God, new birth, in relationship with God, I don't care what I have done or will do, forgive me. But I am here. I have one problem now that I'm here. I am unfamiliar with my resurrect nature. I am unfamiliar with the relationship, what it is to walk with God. That's 6,000 years we've been apart. I don't know this enough. And here's the problem. I can remember how I, what I was like when I have the old nature, and I have a flesh that behaves in alignment with the old nature. That is the problem we, we, we have, every human being. It is called working out your salvation. You understand? You have to work out the parts of you that are not selfish. Work out your salvation. Work out the part. My new nature is selfish. My relationship is selfish. You understand? All my sinful acts is selfish. Which parts are not selfish? As Pastor Joe said, my mind is not selfish yet. This part can get fixed yet. And my body, in truth, will never be salvage. It can be controlled, but not what? Salvage. It's not entering the kingdom of God. Right. So this is the problem we have. I have a few part of me that's not what? Fixed. No, so I am here. So my new nature gives me feelings and, 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 and desires to walk like God. My relationship with God also influences me to want to behave. But I still have my two unselfish fighting what? Directly. They're fighting directly against it. So what the blood of Pastor Chow does, what the blood of Jesus does here, it allows God... Because God is satisfied with your new nature and satisfied with all the activities through the blood that is coming from even sinful or not sinful. The blood is fixing it. He can step in to deal with you. This is, this is how he fixes this. It is the blood, as Pastor Chow said, of relationship and the blood of forgiveness allows him to step in. Do you understand? So this is what the Bible said. And what he's really trying to do here is going to grow your spirit. The reason we keep... The reason we keep sinning and the reason our flesh takes over, the simple truth is this. You are too weak in your spirit. This is the problem. Jesus grew in spirit. The problem, the reason why we can't win, you understand, is because you, you, you are simply too weak in the spiritual development. You are new. You are in relationship. You are forgiven. But you are a child. We are here. The Bible said now you have to what? Grow in Grace, become like Jesus. I want to show you this two quick scripture. Sorry if I'm moving fast. Guys, does this make sense? Like what Pastor Joseph said. So you're not lost. You died and you were what? Resurrected. How do you know this? Because you died with Jesus and you resurrected him. Jesus' blood does what? Relationship? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Amen. You understand? Which allowed them, because you're in relationship, when God look at you, he's not seeing all your sin. He is seeing what? And you being fully forgiven that he can what? Touch. So he, he always wants to come in now to deal with the unselfish part of you. But he, this is what he said, not in your own strength. I'm sorry, you can't, that Pastor Joseph, you can't beat your mind in your own strength. You cannot beat your flesh in your own strength. It has momentum. It's been doing it for what? Decades. Your soul is what? New. You ever seen a baby start creeping? You think this get up and run around? <laughs> That's your soul is like. Mm. It takes time to build what? Momentum. Yeah. One momentum after I'll do what? The other momentum. Does this make sense? Scripture. I want to help you to beat right here. Trust me. I was a man very frustrated here, like Paul. And some of you are very frustrated. It, it is sad. The Bible said what? No, don't mix this up. The Bible said, what sets you free? What sets us free? The truth. The truth. So I have to know this truth. Yes. You will never harness your new nature unless you realize you, are, you died and you resurrected. That is one truth. Amen. Let's go to the left. There's another truth. You will never access God unless you know this truth, even though it's yours. You understand? I'm in blood relationship. The Bible, say you, the Bible said it in Isaiah. You are in blood covenant. Amen. You are in blood covenant with God. You need to know that truth. 
When the enemy goes, you are not with God, you know, a godly person will never do this. Thing. By blood relationship. I'm in covenant with God. Amen. When they go, how can you keep doing this thing? You should be beaten. By the blood of Jesus, I am forgiven. Amen. So this truth sets you free. This truth sets you free. You should never feel separated from God. Anytime you're feeling separated, you don't believe or understand this truth. Mm. Anytime you feel weighted down, you don't believe or understand this truth. Mm. Anytime this old nature is dominated, you don't believe or understand this truth. Mm -hmm. Then this is the final truth I'm hoping we get. How do we win at this truth? Number two. Because of relationship blood and forgiveness blood, and God decreed of newness, there are three things you've got to get here. I have a new nature. Mm -hmm. I am in relationship. Mm -hmm. I am forgiven. Two truths here. Death, resurrection. Two truths here. Relationship, forgiveness. Three truths has to be mastered here to be truthful. You got to know it like there's no tomorrow. I am new. I am in relationship. You, you understand? And you're forgiven. You got to know. Like it is, there has to be a culmination of what? These two has to be pulled there. Three, so, three truths mm -hmm. versus three facts. Yes. Today we'll give you the facts. Correct. Do you understand it? So know these two. Know these two. You understand? And when you stand there, now you go, I am new. I'm a new creature. Mm -hmm. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm in relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And I am forgiven. Mm -hmm. So then let's deal with the facts now. If I am new and I'm in relationship with God and I'm forgiven, why do I think and my flesh handle me? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you the first truth. You're still too young and weak. Mm -hmm. This is the first truth. Mm -hmm. You are what you say. You are new. You are in relationship. You are forgiven. But you are still too weak as Pastor Joseph. You don't know to walk in righteousness yet. Mm -hmm. The simple problem is righteousness. Mm -hmm. You have, The Bible said, we are righteousness. Those who are <clears throat> practice, mature in righteousness. You haven't done enough righteousness. Mm -hmm. So in here, you got, you got to simply go, okay. I'm new. I'm in a relationship with God. I'm forgiven. But I don't know enough how to win in my new nature. And worse, on top of that, my, my unselfish mind and my unselfish body are kind of erupting in this stem. You know, I'm a chef. Every so often, let's say I'm going to sprinkle in a food and the salt getting too, too much. So the food is salty. I, I know a wisdom how to neutralize it. I know to add more water, drain off. So I know a way to what? Fix it. What you don't know is how to fix here. It's like Pastor Chelsea. And this is what I, I'm going to show you how to do something. And I'm going to give you a practical example. I read Galatians chapter 5. Amen. Jane, can you bring up for me from verse 6 through 9, please? Amen. That's the first part I want you to bring up. And then after I finish that, I want you to bring up Galatians 5 also. 16 to 18. Those are no please. Amen. I promise you I'm going to wrap this up in two seconds. I just want to simplify it. Pastor Tom made it very clear, very simple. I just want us to get a little emphasis here, right here. I love here. Beautiful. I love here. I love what you say. Come on. I used to make this mistake. For a long time, you know who I thought the blood was for? Me. Go back and read Leviticus. The blood has nothing to do with you. The blood is God, as Pastor Tom said, concerned. If he don't get the blood requirements, you can't claim something that is his. The Bible never said that. That is his requirement. You got to be like the Israelite like, pastor. You inside eating yours, the lamb. That's what you eat. You can claim, you understand? Old God, new God. You can claim relationship, forgiveness. Those are yours. The blood is his. All his. Anytime the blood is used, it's his. That's what I must say. This is the mystery. You better catch it. If you go, well, just eat the blood, just drink the blood. Mm. And why are you doing it? Mm. You have to understand. The blood brings us into the same cup with Jesus. Mm. It ushers up into the same what? Cup. You're in Jesus. Yes, you're in Jesus. Exactly. Like, I love the analogy of the paper. Mm. The blood does this for you. But you better learn to eat his flesh. You drink the blood to what? Digest. The Bible said, eat his flesh and drink what? His blood. Do you understand? The same cup you drink with him. But you better eat to grow. If you don't eat, you don't grow. Mm -hmm. Anyway, are we there? Yeah. Quickly, I want to show you something quickly. 
quickly. Can we hear now? Remember, I'm not here anymore in here. I am here. I'm standing on three truths. We know the truth here, right? right. Somebody, what's the truth on, on the right? Quickly, right. my right. New, New and all and resurrect. Yes. See, the truth sets you free. 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 Three, two truths on this side set you free. Relationship. Which is established by the blood. <coughs> three truths standing here. I am new. Yes. Yes. I am in. By the what? Blood. Blood. And I am for? For all my craziness in my mind and my flesh. Amen. I don't care what kind of craziness. Amen. Three truths. Mm -hmm. Two truths set me here free. Two truths set me free. This is God. I'm defending against the enemy now. Amen. You understand? I'm setting up the pillars. And three truths, I'm standing here. Mm -hmm. you, I know which one you'll bring against me. Okay. So you're so forgiven. And you have a new state. But you're still a sinner like me. You still break the divine law. Remember from the beginning, mm -hmm. the enemy was what? Breaking the divine law. You're, you're still breaking the divine laws of love. Mm -hmm. Toward you don't love your father enough. You don't love yourself enough. You don't love people. You still go against all three at will. You'll bring it against you. Okay. Nevertheless, I'm still new. Still in relationship. Amen? Mm -hmm. And I am still for giving. That's all you can stand. That's pastor. You're not winning in righteousness. You can't stand anywhere else yet. Now let's see something quickly. I needed you to understand this quickly. For if we are in Christ, how did we get into Christ? Through Jesus. Yes, by the blood, by his death and resurrection. Yep. For if we are in Christ, neither circumcision or uncircumcision comes for anything. But only faith that I die as he die, and I resurrect as he resurrect, and his blood form the relationship and give me forgiveness. Amen. Comes for anything, only faith. Activate and energize and express, amen? Mm -hmm. And work in through love. Look at verse 7. Mm -hmm. You are, this is the problem. We need to win here. We need to run a race here. Amen. You don't run a race here. You don't run a race here. Mm -hmm. These are done for you by God. Mm -hmm. You have to run a race where? Here. But you got to know what you're doing. Amen. This death fix for you. This blood fix for you. Where are you trying to win? I still see people, this, it's just truth you need to win here. You don't run a race here. It's just truth you use here. Mm -hmm. But here you have to actually fight Amen. properly. Yes. So Paul, I love Paul goes, okay. You are running, amen, the race nobly. Mm -hmm. You knew here and you knew here. You're here. Mm -hmm. But look what happened. Look at Who, amen? Where am I? Yeah. You know, got it. Who has interfered in hindered and stop you from, amen? You're eating and following the truth. Oh. There are two problems you have here. The first one is Pastor Charles said, you're running the noble risk. Somebody keep interrupting and interfering. Mm -hmm. You understand? But you need to know what is the race. I'll say it to you, then I'll show it to you in the scripture. Mm -hmm. You are trying to grow in your spirit. Amen. But different things keep interrupting mm -hmm. the race. Christ, what Christ did for 30 years was growing his what? Spirit. Everything else is byproduct. The, what, what your own mind and your flesh do, every time you try to pray or you try to read the word of God or you try to come to fellowship, oh, I need to sleep. I need to go to massage. I need to get this. It's interfering with what? Your growth. Your development. It interferes. You, you understand? With your advancement. Do, do you understand this? And then on top of that, the enemy. The enemy job is to, is Satan, you think Satan is stupid where you are? He quite, he, if you realize you don't know this truth, he'll attack here. Yes. If you know you don't know this truth, he'll attack. Exactly. Let's, you know, let's say you know you got this under control. He will attack right here. What he attack here, this is truth he's attacking. This is truth he's attacking. Here is your development he's attacking. Mm. Your potential to become what you are to be. What God is interested in you right now is here, right here. The scripture said, yes, those are done. You are running a nobly race. Who has interfered in it, in, in dirt, and stop you from doing it? Your mind going to do it. You need to be out. This is where you must learn to pray. Your flesh going to do it. You understand? The devil going to do it. And he's going to use people, things, and sit you. Wish it. This is why Paul said, I handle my flesh hard, rough. Why? He knew it will what? Interfere. You have to learn, the goal is, and this is where you have to learn to pray. Lord, help me to stop succumbing to my flesh. 
Help me to stop following my mind. And this is where God will help you.